Hey guys, in this video we're taking a look at Arturio's brand new plugin called Pigments, which is a hybrid wavetable slash subtractive synth. So I've had access to the beta for a couple of days now. So in this video I'm just going to go over the front panel and kind of talk you through what the features are. Alright, so here's what the plugin looks like. So it could be a little overwhelming. There's lots of little buttons and knobs and switches. But let's break it down at a super high level. So you have effectively three different sections vertically. You have this big top section here, you have this middle bar in the middle here, and then you have the section at the bottom here. Everything at the top here is all these sound generators and sound processors, so your oscillators and filters. Everything at the bottom are your modulation sources, so things that create modulation like envelopes, LFOs, and function generators. And then this tab in the middle here is your modulation matrix, so this is how you assign which modulation source gets mapped to whatever parameter you want in the synth here. So if we dive in at the top section here, the sound generator portion, you have two engines, and an engine can either be a wavetable or an analog. So this is how you can get the hybrid. You can either have it as a wavetable or a standard subtractive synth with using standard oscillators. And then you have two identical engines which you can toggle with this power button here. So in engine one, again, you have analog. So if we go here, super simple. So I've loaded an initial patch here so I can play some notes. So now we just have our standard sawtooth. Obviously you can change it to triangle, sine, square, to change the width, course tuning. And then here you have global tuning here, as well as drift to kind of detune the voices when you're playing chords. And then you have three different oscillators which you can turn on by just engaging the different volumes. You can disable key tracking and you can sync oscillator one to oscillator two. And then here you have routing because you have two filters, you can set how much you want to route into filter one or two or a mix of the two. And then you can sort of set the output of how much is going into the filter. You have a noise source which is independent from the oscillators here which can go from blue, red and white. And then you have this modulation oscillator here which can either be oscillator three or noise and then you can set the amount of that and you can see that changing here depending on what you set. So you can get some pretty gnarly stuff that way. Let's switch over to the wavetable which is sort of the bread and butter of this synth. If we look at here you have two ways of displaying your wavetables. You have either 3D which is this here which you can see all the wavetables and how they morph or 2D which just gives you the current slice of the table. So if you're new to wavetable synthesis, effectively it's just a table of single cycle oscillators or a collection of them which you can morph between. So instead of having just a static saw wave, you can have a whole collection like saw, some weird vocal wave, some percussive wave, and then you can kind of blend between them and modulate that blending. And that's where you get the power here. So if we look at the main section here, you have your main picker here to choose which table you want. So you have different categories of wavetables. So we have building waves, natural process, synthesizer, and then for each one you have a whole slew of stuff. So let me just pick this matrix metalizer here. So you can see how you can get super complex. So what you're doing with this position here is changing which wave or which position in the wavetable you're pointing. So if I play a note, you can hear how it creates this subtle timbral shift. And what's cool is assigning the wavetable position to a modulation source, which we'll tackle in a sec here. And then similar to the other oscillator, you can determine how much you want to route into either filter one or two. All right, below here, you have four different ways of kind of manipulating the waveform. So one is frequency modulation, then you have phase modulation, phase distortion, and wave folding. And these are just different ways to sculpt and shape the wave and change its timbre and all of these get assigned to this dedicated modulator oscillator here which you can set either in relative frequency absolute or hertz so let me just show some examples here Obviously I'm going into like super extremes now just to give you the gist of it, but you can obviously fine tune these to get more pleasing sounds. And then once we finish our two engines here, we move on to our dual filters here. So again, you can toggle these filters independently on and off with these power buttons. And then for each filter, you have different simulations of synths. So you have a multi-mode filter, you have the Oberheim SEM, Oberheim Matrix, 
uh, the Minimog, I believe, and then a couple of others here. You have a Foreman filter. So lots and lots of flexibility. And for each one, pretty standard controls, cutoff frequency, resonance, everything you would expect. So let me just do a Minimog here. <laughs> And then you have some simple modulation here or an FM source if you want. So you can do keyboard tracking, which is pretty common for filters. And then you can add some subtle filter drive. And then you have the volume output and you can pan the filter left and right. So for example, you can have one filter going left, one filter going right. And then you can swap the two with this button here. At the far right here, you have the routing to determine if you want the filters to be routed in series or parallel. And then you have amp modulation related to some parameter here. So for example, you can have it so that if you press harder velocity here, it makes the sound louder. And then down here you have panning. And you can have a send level which will send it to the effect. So there are actually built-in effects to this synth. Let's move over to the modulation section at the bottom. And for me, this is really the power of the synth. The modulation options are really insane. So first let's focus on these tabs at the bottom because they're fairly well organized. So the tabs determine which modulation source you're editing. So you can either have the keyboard here, which you have bend range, uh, glide, and the actual keyboard if you wanted to. Then you have three different ADSR envelope generators. Each have identical controls, attack, decay, sustain, release, and you can set the curves of the release or attack if you wanted to here. And then you have three different LFOs. Again, very simple stuff. You just change the rate. Uh, the symmetry, you can change the waveform. So again, you have lots of blending tools here to set different kind of shapes. You have this function generator, which is super unique and cool. You can effectively add these dots and kind of shape your, either as a super complicated LFO or as a complicated multi-stage envelope generator, if you wanted to. So you can have it so that it's one shot so that it triggers once. You can have it so that it loops and you can have it free running. So this is a cool way to add some subtle modulations. You can treat this as a sequencer, as an LFO, as an envelope generator, and you have three of those, which is pretty cool. At the end here, you have three different ways of doing random generations. You have a Turing machine, which kind of samples and generates mini sequences, which you can auto retrigger. You have sample and hold, which is just kind of pure randomness. And then you have binary, which is just on or off. And then you have this combinate thing at the end. And here you can pick two different modulation sources and then you decide how you want to combine them together. So you can add, subtract, multiply. And for example, you can combine two different LFOs or two, an envelope and an LFO. And then at the end, you have these four different macro knobs. And again, you can assign anything you want to these if you just wanted a single knob to control multiple different parameters. So let's do a classic example. Let's assign an LFO to the position of the wavetable. So if I change the position knob, it sounds like this. So let's say I wanted to assign an LFO one to that, for example. What you would do is you go into the matrix here, you tap on whichever thing you want, so LFO one. This takes you into a page where you can just assign freely any knob you want to this uh, source. And the way to do that is that you just hover over the edge of a parameter. So for example, if you go into knob, you see my cursor is here. If I go on the edge, you'll see this up and down arrow. And now I can just drag up and down and you'll see this inner ring showing me how much modulation of LFO1 will be assigned to that knob. And similarly here, you'll notice that this little box appeared. So for example, I can assign LFO1 to a bunch of different parameters here. And you'll see that for each one, you get a little box and then you can edit how much you want it to appear here. And of course, I can just close those out if I don't want those anymore. So let's keep it to the position one. So now if I press a note, And now I can actually go to the LFO section here and then change the different parameters like the rate or the waveform. And then it's the same for all the other ones. So for example, let's say I wanted to assign a function to control the cutoff frequency here. So I can just do the same thing, click on function one, drag the cutoff frequency border here, and then you'll see this parameter appear here. And then I can go into the function section, pick function one, and then you'll see that this function that I've drawn here is controlling the cutoff frequency. And again, I can make it a one shot. And you can go back here and change the amount.
And what's cool is that not only can you assign these modulation sources to the audio parameters up here, you can actually assign them to different modulation source parameters as well. So for example, let's say I wanted envelope three to control the rate of the first LFO. So I can just go to LFO here and while I have envelope three selected in my matrix, again, similarly, I can just go here and set the rate to be modulated by this envelope. And then if I go back to my envelope three, I can just change that shape here. And now you can see that as the envelope increases, it's changing the rate of the LFO. And of course, this is a polyphonic synth, so you can set it from either mono all the way up to 32 voices. All right, I've initialized the patch. We just have a single sawtooth. So let's demo the combinate feature here. So for example, let me pick LFO one as the first source and I'm gonna add it to nothing. So effectively what this is giving us is just LFO one. So now if I go to my combinate one here, I'm gonna assign that to the frequency of the oscillator here. So you can see that all we're hearing is LFO one. But the cool part here is now I can, let's say I wanted to combine LFO one and LFO two together. So now if I go to my LFO page, I can start shaping LFO two to be different maybe a different frequency. And now you can see that the resulting waveform is way more complex than that original LFO. And of course you can do crazy combinations here. You can combine some of the random things like let's combine the Turing generator. And you can set different kinds of combinations. You can do difference, multiply, divisions. And then you can go here and change the probabilities of the Turing repeating. All right, so let's move over to this top section here. And if you're familiar with Arteria plugins, this is pretty similar stuff here. You have your main preset manager up here. And then here you can pick which preset you want based on some categories. And up here you have three different tabs. So the main one is the synth, which we've been seeing so far. Next to that, you have the effect section. So there's actually tons of different effects that ship with this plugin here. And the way to route those is that you have two different buses and then you have a send. So the, the two buses are inserts, which you can control how much you want here. And then you can set the routing to either go serially through both or in parallel. And then the send, you have a separate bus here. And then via the synth parameter here, you have a send level so you can send how much of whatever engine you want into a particular effect. So for example, if I go to bus A, currently I have a delay selected here. So if I increase the wet dry. And then you have lots of different kinds of effects, EQs, bit crushers, phasers, reverbs, chorus. So let me add a bit crusher here. And then add some reverb. Maybe add a nice filter. Let's add a matrix 12 filter. And let's maybe assign envelope three to control the cutoff there. And so far we're just using the analog engine. So for example, let's say I added engine two as a wavetable and let's pick one of the complicated waves here. Happiness harms, that sounds interesting. And let's add LFO two to modulate the position. And then I'm gonna set that to a really slow rate here. So the other thing I can demo is this tuning quantize feature, which is pretty unique. So you have a coarse tuning for the whole engine here. Pretty standard stuff, just semitones. What's cool is that you can set it to quantize and then you can actually pick which notes are used when it's quantizing that, when you're turning that knob. So for example, I can make it use only a C major scale by removing all the black notes here. 
and then you can assign a parameter. So let's say I assign LFO3 to control that. And of course you can remove some notes so I can make it just the third and the fifth. So you're almost getting a mini sequencer, which is kind of cool. And speaking of sequencers, the last tab up here is the sequencer itself. So here, of course, you can set different notes. And here you can quantize this as well. So I can make it use a major scale and then pick some values. And up here you can change whether you want an ARP or a sequencer. And the other thing I forgot to mention is that in the wavetable section here, you can actually turn off morphing so that instead of interpolating and blending between the waves, it'll just jump to different parts of the wavetable drastically. And the other the cool thing is that the effect section, you can actually assign the modulation sources to the effect knobs as well. So for example, I've selected LFO3, which I'm gonna assign to the wet dry knob of the reverb here. We can have the LFO in sync kind of bring in the reverb in and out. And then I'm gonna bring a bit crusher here. And I'm gonna use function two to control the bit depth of the crusher here. And then maybe I'm gonna also use that function generator to control the wet dry. What's cool is that in the sequencer, you can change the octave at different steps, you can change the velocity, and you can actually set the probability of a trigger to happen and even change the gate length. So let me try to mess around with some of these. All right, I'm gonna wrap it up there. Hopefully that gave you a good overview and first look at this synthesizer and what it can do. So yeah, I'm gonna do probably separate videos where I focus more on browsing through the presets and just doing pure sounds without talking. Stay tuned for the next one. I'll see you guys in the next one.